time now for the Zach Martin Show here on 105.3 The Fan on your home of the Cowboys. Uh, brought to you by Dr. Pepper, an official soft drink of the Dallas Cowboys. And He's in the building! Good afternoon, Zach. How the heck you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Well, uh, we're doing great. Uh, you know, it's the New York Giants this week, and, and you guys have absolutely owned them over your time with the Cowboys. Uh, 40 to zip week one. Why do you think you guys have always matched up so well there, Zach? I don't know. You know, obviously division opponent, divisional opponent there. So, um, you know, always always a little extra on the line in those games. And, um, you know, it's going to be another big one uh, on Sunday. Um, you know, I know they're going to this they're going to lay it out on the line. And, you know, anytime you go you go against a team that, you know, is struggling a little bit record wise, uh, you got to be ready for them to kind of throw the kitchen sink at you. So uh, we got prepared for everything. It is a division rival. Have you ever thought about doing the Aaron Rodgers thing when you're walking off the field in New York saying, like, I own you? Remember uh, when he no. did that to the Bears? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to work you know, we, we got to deal with Big 97 in there and some other guys. So, yeah. you know, we're just, you know, keep about our business. Okay, you brought up the finger sniff last week. We talked to you about this. <laughs> I didn't see CD doing it. Did he not do it? He was doing uh, he was doing a different version of like letting the people know that he got a first down, but it didn't involve the sniffing of the finger. I was a little bit disappointed for sure. Yeah, I didn't see that. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, I mean, we got a lot of people that are that are interested in hopefully getting you to do one of those. So we're all <laughs> eyes on it right now. We're we're looking forward to it. I'll be there. I'll, I'll be all over. Do you, now, do you have your own celebration in mind if you were to you know, pick up a ball or or get a get a ball in some way or another? You know, I've never, I've never, uh, I mean, I've recovered a fumble like late on it, but I've never, uh, I've never advanced the ball. So, uh, you know, not on the, not on the, uh, f- the forefront of my mind there on what I would do if I actually touched the ball and advanced it. I like your chances to get in, Zach. You look pretty hard to bring down. <laughs> Nimble. <laughs> At any point in your football career, uh, you know, throughout, you know, the peewee days or the middle school, high school days, did, did you ever tote the rock? Oh no! I was handing the dirt guy. I was a uh, the leagues I played in growing up. You had the stripes on the helmet, so I was always oh, a yeah. uh, you know double or triple striper, which is a uh, strictly <laughs> hand in the dirt. Hell yes! Uh, you know we had the triple stripe where you could only play <laughs> offense too, which was oh no. Yeah, I, I had to cut some weight one year. I think it was my sixth grade year, so I uh, I can make double stripe and play defense. Did, did Zach? Did they did they weigh you like opening day? Like yeah, before, yeah. It was like, when, like it was your like dad before. runs you up there and you have to get on the scale. Yeah, it was in front like a one everybody. one time weigh in. Yeah. Uh, and I remember one year, it was my sixth grade year, and I remember in the summer I weighed myself, and I was like, damn, I'm not going to be able to play defense. So I, I lost like whatever it was, 10 or 15 pounds oh, that summer in sixth grade so I could make sure I could play defense. Well, wait, did you, like, after the weigh did you go to White Castle? Oh, yeah, I remember it was like yourself? the first time I like, ever cut weight, like didn't eat the entire like day of the weigh-in, like just like drinking minimal water. Yeah, just yeah. down in it. I love it. Is yeah. there any truth to uh, in your high school days you had the nickname The Butcher? <laughs> this is probably the number one asked question I've gotten since being in Dallas over the last 10 years. I've never heard of that. I'm aware okay, that it's this on is my made Wiki- up. I- I'm aware it's on my Wikipedia page, uh, but I do not ever recall being called the Butcher. Have you had a nickname during the course of your playing career? I mean, my nickname in uh, growing up was was Goblin. The okay. Gob. That's, That's why you, know, you got my, the Gob my, my 70. Handle. Yeah, that was uh, everyone back home calls me that. The gob. Uh, guys, girls, parents, everyone calls me Gob. <laughs> Well, Walter got ball sacked by the butcher situation. <laughs> well, I, asked, so I was like, is this true? I don't know. I mean, is it is it a butcher or not? Do you guys move inside today with the rain going on? We or? were. We were we were inside on the turf. Now, are you are you one of those guys that likes playing in the rain? Is that fun or um maybe when I was younger. Um, you know, not as much uh now, but um you know, it's just kind of annoying more than anything. Now, yeah, it is. It is. I, I get you, especially especially in Dallas. It, just, it can rain hard, you know. It's oh, not, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we don't ever really have to worry about I'm trying to think the last, like, big rain game we had. Um, New England. It rained we played in Miami one Miami time. Miami Miami 15, was, yeah. Buffalo in 15. Yeah. It was in December, and it was raining. It was, like, oh. right at the cusp of, like, being snow or rain. Uh, New England in 19. Commanders was, sometime it was one of those Commanders games having yeah, a range. Yeah, yeah, that was in 2020. I think I I, I don't think I played that game, but uh, 2019 uh, New England at New England that was a uh, that was another one of those like 40 45 and rainy. You got a pretty good memory. Worse. You got a you got a memory for these games, don't you? Can you I, pick out a lot of them? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can. Uh, yeah, I can pretty oh. much remember all the games throughout. Ooh. Okay, we were playing earlier. Joe Burrow. 
calling plays in the huddle, if you ever had to, let's say something happened and Dak got a fly in his mouth or something and you've got to rattle off a play call, could you do it? Uh, yeah, I mean, if I had a microphone in my helmet. And you'd be, could you give us a little sample on what that sounds like? Well, you know, the thing people don't understand, I try to explain because everyone's always comes to me like, oh my God, those play calls, how do you follow along? It's so like, long? in our world, I'm listening for like a one word out of all that that he's yeah. saying. Slide or yeah, like yeah, a you yeah, know our protection call yeah, or like yeah. the number for the run game. Right, like right. it could be it could be a long sentence, but if I hear the formation yeah. and the protection, that those are the two things I need to hear. Okay, what would you what what would you pick out of this one here? If I give you grizzle left tight F fly pass thirty seven punch waggle help baby dizzy X fan on the turbo, does anything stand out to you there? That's a Bengals play call. Yeah, the I mean the thirty seven punch. Uh, that okay. would, that sounds like that would be something I would need to know on the, on the turbo. That's the, sounds like a cadence. That sounds like something I would want to know. Um, but all that other stuff. Okay, speaking of the cadence and stuff and things you'd want to know, did you see how insane it was? What was going on with uh, with Minnesota and the Vikings and Josh Dobbs stepping in and he's like he he just arrived to the team in the middle of the week and then the quarterback gets hurt in the game, so he's got to go in and he's having to go over his cadence with his offensive line and his center because he hadn't done it yet. Like the level of difficulty. Oh my there. gosh! That, yeah, that was uh, you know hats off to to Dobbs. That was uh, that was pretty impressive. Uh, just because uh, you know we know how much time. Uh, goes into all these meetings and everything during the week to kind of cram everything in. So the fact that he got there last week and uh, I think he said he didn't the first time he threw to the receivers was in pregame warmups. I mean that's uh, that's pretty impressive. So hats off to him. Hey Zach, I, I have to ask you a question about the uh, uh, something I noticed when I was watching the All Twenty Two on the Schoonmaker play, and they got the blitz from Morrow, the linebacker. It like you went down inside and and then Steele went outside. Is that just a free runner that you guys? No, don't? that was that was a uh, that was a foobar. Uh, you huh. know, I, I got to uh, I got to come out there in the B gap and, and and take the hit off that linebacker. Um, okay, I followed Fletcher down in the A gap, but yeah, no, that was uh, that was on us. Okay, because I was watching, I'm thinking like, man, I go usually I think the Zach would probably bumped out here on this one. Yeah, probably yeah, like that cover zero down down yeah. on the uh, down there. So, um, well, thank you yeah. for your honesty, man. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just trying to learn. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, that, that one was no, on appreciate your brother doing yeah. that. Thank you. Well, yeah. let's keep trying to learn. I'm curious from your standpoint because there's been times in your career with the Cowboys that you guys have run a ton of successful screens, and lately it seems as though that might be a little bit of a challenge. What's the key to running a successful screen? Yeah, screen. You know, screens are. Um, uh, you know, there's there's some moving parts in the screen, but um, you know the big thing is these D linemen are getting pretty good at, at sniffing them out. Um, so the important thing is, uh, you know, if you're covered, um, you've got to either make sure that he rushes up the field, or if he doesn't, then kind of uh, hang back on the line, and the next lineman's kind of got to replace. So um, you know, they uh, they they become harder and harder, but they're they're definitely a you know a big part of I know what coach wants to do, and uh, you know their big play potential. So, um, you know, execution's got to be at a premium when we're doing those. Zach Martin with us. Uh, there was a story this week. They're talking about Tyron Smith maybe not practicing the rest of the season, just going out there and playing games. Are you are you goats just so <laughs> dialed you can just step in there and play on Sunday, be good to go? I mean, Tyron is a different. I mean, he's a he's a mutant. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think I can do that, but, uh, you know, Tyron, uh, man, he's, he's just, he's a freak, man. So I'll tell you he, what, Zach, I mean, he was incredible. It was like turn back the clock day, how dominant he was in that oh, game. Oh my, my gosh. gosh it was yeah. He was, he was snap lights after out. Snap. And, um, you know, we're obviously, uh, you know, a better football team when he's on the field. So, you know, whatever he's got to do to it, to be out there. If you could take one attribute from Tyron Smith and make it yours, what would it be? Um, arm length, probably arm length and just overall strength and power. Well, I mean, do, do you ever just, do you ever marvel at the crap that you do? Like when you, when you envisioned your football career, have you sort of surpassed what you envisioned for yourself? Yeah, I would, I mean, I would say I always had goals of coming into, uh, you know, playing professional football. I don't think they were, um, maybe as lofty as, as some of the things that I've accomplished. But, uh, you know, the big thing now is uh, you're always chasing to be that, um, you know, that player that, that you've been throughout your career. So that's, you know, a big thing for me over these, over these years, as you get a little older, you're, you're constantly chasing, um, 
trying to keep that standard high. Yeah, who's putting you in the Hall of Fame? Who's gonna Who's gonna present you for the Hall of Fame? You ever <laughs> well, get, you we ever gotta get there. Thought? Yeah. We oh no, get you're, there, you're gonna. You, they're there. Just start thinking about those things. Yeah, gold your color. You already yeah, know that. Yeah, golden you know, domer. Yeah, that golden domer. Put the jacket on. <laughs> you you'll go. be good to go. We'll get Gojo <laughs> back in here. Maybe he can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Gojo would be good. That'd be I like good the one. I like the nickname Gojo. I didn't, yeah. Is that a new? Is that kind of new? It's it might Gojo. Be. I think he's been rocking with that since he got in the media world. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like that Gojo. We were doing some food duos earlier, like what's the best food combinations, peanut butter and jelly. Do you have one that stands out to you personally? Peanut butter and jelly, what else? Um, Steak and lobster, mm, anything like that. Grilled yeah. cheese, tomato soup was on there, spaghetti yeah, and meatballs. Milk and uh, cookies. Milk and cookies, I love, I love me some milk and cookies. Uh, peanut butter chocolate. Um, yeah, anything peanut butter chocolate, I'm all over. The Reese's is the go to. Yeah, that's my, yeah okay. number one. That's Coors Light and a brat, you know. Coors Light and a brat, okay. <laughs> Beer and pizza. Yeah. Do you go with A1 on steak? <laughs> no, come on, man. <laughs> I, I thought so. Do you slap the cook in the face, too, or what? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> hey, you want to give away some cowboy tickets? Sure. Okay, just say caller number 10, you win. Caller number 10, you win. Thank you, Zach. We'll catch up with you next week, man. Give him help. All right, appreciate y'all.